Hello, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a 41-year-old motivational speaker and polar explorer. Welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Hello, my name is Aaron Linsdow. I'm a 41-year-old motivational speaker and polar explorer. Welcome to Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Jackson Hole is home to the National Elk Refuge, where over 8,000 head of elk move down from the high country in the winter to survive in the lower grasslands. The best part about living here is that people can come and experience the wilds of nature, seeing these powerful animals up close. I love living in Jackson Hole, but I also want to go to Africa to experience a different wild, a different tough experience. In Jackson, it's cold, it's wintry, but I know in Africa it's hot, desolate, and difficult to deal with, and that's where I want to go to test my experience, to see if I have what it takes to take what I know from here in Antarctica and apply it in somewhere totally different. That was awesome. Just as I was driving out of the refuge, somebody stopped me and said, hey, by the way, even though those ewes were down there, you gotta turn around only 400 meters away were the rams. So that's another thing about people here is they'll actually be willing to go out of their way to stop and help you find the things you're looking for. That's I'm used to the cold weather as going across Antarctica, no problem for below freezing. But I wonder how I'm going to handle the heat in plains of Africa. That's a totally different world. Right at the base of Jackson Hole is Snow King, one of the steepest ski runs in the lower 48 United States. It's a very popular venue to go hiking up and skiing down. Jackson Hole is loaded with visitor centers where people can come in and learn about the area before they strike out so they have the best chance of finding the things that they're interested in looking at in the natural world. Come on, let's go inside. Oh, no, no, that's okay, thanks. It's kind of fun to just catch other people checking it out. And with these animals inside here, you can get a good idea how big they actually are. Jackson Hole is also popular with artists, and there's tons of artwork, both animal, western, and modern, spread throughout the town. And though the wolves are quite reckless, you can get a good idea of just how large and amazingly strong this animal actually is. And this is one guy you definitely do not want to run in in the outdoors. One peculiarity of Wyoming and especially Jackson are the very popular antler chandeliers made and hung in hotels, visitor centers, and even homes. All the dioramas give you a feel for the scale, the size, the power, and the beauty of the nature around Jackson. Living in Jackson also allows me to attend the church where my parents got married in 1972, one year before I was born. This place has a lot of history and special meaning to me. It's actually possible to drive out on the National Elk Refuge Road where you might have the chance to see bighorn sheep, bald eagles feeding, elk and pronghorn running around. And that's what I love about Jackson too. People are very outdoorsy. They're not afraid to get out, get a little dirty, and experience the outdoors. Some people just take a stroll along the refuge road to get away from the stress of life and to get back to the basics of nature. So anytime you're in a survival situation and you find yourself out in the woods, there's all sorts of natural resources. And it doesn't matter whether you're in the cold winters of the Rocky, the Antarctic, or in the deserts of Africa. The most important tool you've got is your mind. Once you can use your mind and use the resources, slow down and evaluate all the things you have available to you, you can survive almost anywhere in the world. Make sure you always bring a few pieces of kit, like a handy dandy knife, right? So you can cut things, repair things, have no problems there. 
but there are other important parts of kit. One is a hat, whether it's a winter hat or a summer hat to keep the sun off of you. It may look a little silly, but it'll keep you safe and keep you warm. So some of the things I bring in my kit, whether I'm in the extreme cold or the absolute heat, is of course a first aid kit. That is super important because with a few bandages, a whistle, some antiseptics, and a needle, you can keep yourself going and keep yourself together for a long time. When your feet get all torn up, there's nothing more miserable than walking with blisters. Another piece of kit that I have, here is a compass. On the planet, a compass will take you in the right direction no matter where you are. It keeps you going, it helps you understand that you're going in the direction you need to be going. I always bring also water purification, that's super important. And then what else here do we have? Fire starter. Using this, just a little bit of cotton and Vaseline or petroleum jelly. And we have a lighter here. Get a little bit of flame going and we can have a fire going in no time. Should that lighter fail, we have the very ancient flint and steel. Totally effective. Make some sparks. You can be at home in no time. If you're in trouble and lost, a signal mirror catches the sun, able to signal, and a whistle. It's a lot less effort to whistle than it is to scream because nobody can hear you scream in the wilderness, but they can hear a whistle. Let's see what else I've got in here. Important kit. Another pocket knife, always handy. Multi-tool and should things get real hairy, you've got the corkscrew so you can open the bottle of wine and celebrate your last moment on earth. Hopefully not. One thing I found that's super handy is a commando saw. This thing, you can take this thing and after I trip over my cable, I can begin sawing this wood in just a few minutes. I can saw through and begin making pieces for a shelter, any shelter that I need anywhere in the world. This is much more difficult to cut with a knife or a hatchet, but this sort of saw is easy to handle, it's safe, and the design, I can run my fingers on it, and I have no trouble, it doesn't cut me at all. So this is a very powerful tool to have. What else do I have in my kit here? Fire starter, first aid kit. Ah, let's see. Alrighty, let me that. Ah, backup snacks. When things are really rough, you can always get into your backup snacks and survive and keep going. If you're in a real rough situation where there are lots of insects, you can bring a bug head net. And this thing, when the mosquitoes are driving you mad, you simply put this over your head. Wonderful in the desert. Totally pointless in the winter in the Americas, in the Rockies, Antarctica, and the North Pole. Totally useless. But in Africa, Greenland in the summer, anywhere where there's lots of bugs, this thing is brilliant. Notice here, I've got another fire starter. I've got patch repair kits. Everything to keep me going in just a few Ziploc bags. And a thermometer, well, thermometers aren't that useful other than to tell you, yes, you're broiling or yes, you're freezing. But for some reason, outdoor adventurers always bring these sort of things. If things get really bad and you damage your shell jacket, oops, always bring an emergency poncho. You can make a shelter out of it. It'll keep you dry, keep you warm. It'll keep the sun off you. So in winter, you're freezing. But in the summer in broiling Africa, this thing keeps the sun off you. It prevents sunburn, protects you. You can keep the bugs out a little bit. Very, very handy. Highly recommend. So any of the tools you've got, including this camera, I can tear apart that tripod, make a shelter out of it. If someone gets injured, you can tear apart that tripod again and make a splint with just a little bit of cord. Always very handy to have. Let's see, what else have I got in here? Batteries, GPS, headlamp. The headlamp is a very important piece of kit. 
because when it gets dark, you're stuck in the woods, you turn this thing on, and you can see at night, no problems. So this is a very useful thing because when you put this thing on, of course, it frees up your hands, you can see things. This has a spotlight mode and a flood mode. So anywhere in the world, you're worried about animals or anything, just turn on the spotlight and what it does is when it's right on your head, you can look out and you can see the reflection of eyes. Of course, that messes with your mind. That's a survival thing. But the ability to see eyes a long ways away helps you evaluate, okay, what was that sound? Because anything that's interested in eating you is going to be looking at you. And they're not used to headlamps. So when you catch them, you can say, ah, there's a problem over there. And you can deal with it. A GPS, a GPS was super handy in Antarctica because without it, unless you have a sextant and a compass, you'd be lost and you'd be dead. There's no way to get through it. But with the GPS, you can navigate anywhere on the planet. So even when you don't know where your compass is taking you, the GPS is the key. And of course, always bring spare batteries. So a lot of these tools are useful, but they're also helpful if you can get multi-purpose, like the tripod that's holding the camera, the knife, the poncho that serves as wind, rain shelter, but also general protection and keeping you off out of the sun. So it's not that skills in the winter don't translate to somewhere in the Africa, in the Arctic. The psychology of survival is all the same because you have to use your most powerful tool. It's your mind. I spend quite a bit of time on the computer at the library and at home as I'm working on the projects that I'm furthering, whether it's promoting my motivational speaking or working on photography. As an engineer with over 17 years of experience, working on the computer is a completely familiar thing as I've spent a gazillion hours living on that thing. But that's why I live in Jackson. It's not only to work and have the resources, but it's to get out and play. Walking along these boardwalks harkens back to the days of the cowboys. Except cowboys didn't quite have jewelry like that you see behind me. But that's okay. During the summer, this place is jam-packed with people. You can imagine that this little town funnels almost three million people through the area. It's definitely an experience to behold when normally there's virtually no one here. But in the summer, the town can swell from 10,000 people to 100,000 people during the day. One of the best parts is people in Jackson definitely have a sense of humor. Now there is a chance that you might not see animals when you come visit. So if you go into the local stores, you'll find animals to visit one way or another. And another unique thing about Jackson, you can find super ancient animals that once roamed this area too. They're not as dangerous as they used to be, thank goodness, but uh, I still don't think I would have got chewed on by these teeth like in the movie in Jurassic Park. And if you're feeling super scientific, you can actually come and check out chips off of Mars and off the moon. They're actually for sale and available in this little town in the middle of Wyoming. This is Kelly, my girlfriend, that hopefully I will uh, have to miss when I'm in Africa trekking across. She's my expedition support. She was actually my expedition manager in Antarctica. She's and after a good day of running around in the wilds and woods, it's good to come to the coffee shop, pick up the daily paper, thumb through and see what's going on. Like the classic towns of old, we've got Starbucks, the tavern, and of course a liquor store, and then right next to it, an expensive rug gallery. What visit to Jackson wouldn't be complete without going into the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar. And the Cowboy Bar, they use stools for, or saddles for bar stools. Definitely makes it much more unique. And the story with this particular grizzly bear is that a guy actually killed it barehanded. Somehow he got in a fight with the bear, he was able to choke it out. And then once the bear was choked out, he took a 2 by 4 to it. Yes, it actually is this cold that this t-shirt means something. Even though Jackson Hole is quite a small town in the grand scheme of the United States, and certainly even Wyoming, it's one of the most famous in all of Wyoming, if not the Northern Rockies here. 
The word hotel, built in the late 1940s, is near and dear to my heart because I had two relatives who work here. One is my grandfather, he retired after 33 years, and my aunt is actually still working here, and she's worked here for over 50 years now. As you go in the hotel, you're immediately greeted by the grand staircase. And if you don't get the chance to see bison, you can always stop by and see bison in the hotel. And if you don't see a moose, you can also see the moose and it can kiss your ear. The word hotel is also one of the last bastions for gambling in Wyoming. So this hotel definitely has history for me, as this person right here, my grandfather, Roy Akira Takeda, was one of the first Japanese people to move into the area with his children and his wife. And just to show you how crazy Jackson used to be, they used to do horse races down the main drag right in front of the hotel. An entire bar is lined with 1921 Morgan Silver Dollars. So I'm going to take you down into the secret section of the hotel. That's where they used to do the gambling. That's one of the areas. So there's a story that the hotel is connected to the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar by a series of secret tunnels, which isn't true. There's about the closest place to a tunnel that you would ever get is right in here under the dirt foundation, but there are no secret tunnels between the Million Dollar Cowboy Bar and the Silver Dollar Bar. This picture was made with a 22 automatic rifle. It was shot with 30 rounds and it was done in 90 seconds with no drawing and no preparation. This and the people who did painting in here had a good sense of humor. And this is a very true statement. Sometimes too much drink is not enough. And then if you're feeling sad, you are a handsome man. Then we can have a drink, go talk to the ladies, and be brave. Dice tomatoes. The best pizza joint in town is Pinky G's, definitely solid. Personal delivery, just like that. So all this footage has been shot in one day so far. So just in a few hours you can see what you can do in Jackson Hole. Now you wonder what that building is that's behind me and I'm walking around with this bouncy video. And what this is is the Center for the Arts. This is also another reason why I like Jackson Hole. It has dedicated workspace for artists. The entire Center for the Arts has painting rooms, photography labs, and what Center for the Arts wouldn't be a Center for the Arts without a painting room? The town's not only dedicated to art for adults, but art for children as well, knowing that. And if you're, you're tired of a bunch of animals running around, you can come and get some culture at the Art Center as well. The kids are practicing for a show tomorrow. I have the chance to work with some commercial clients, and this is a sample of my work in one of the storefront windows. The town's even modernized now that they have an electrical vehicle charging station. And if you have a sense of humor, you can mount these antlers on your head and surround yourself like a halo with the red lights of the antler arch. The town square is popular for art events, food events. It's heavily used, it's a beautiful place, and it's right in the middle of the town. This town also honors its veterans with a plaque commemorating all of the different wars that the United States has been in in the 19th and 20th centuries as well meaning to me because I was born in this place all these places I remember when I was a little kid and now as an adult I get to experience them from a completely different perspective it's a place that you should definitely come and experience and enjoy Good. welcome to snow king one of the steepest ski runs in the lower 48 states this hill rises 1600 feet above the valley floor in only three quarters of a mile and this is the place that I'll train if I get to go to Africa. At least three times a week, I hike up and down this hill, regardless snow, ice, storm, whatever, doesn't matter. Because that's one thing, no matter where you go in the world, Antarctica, Africa, China, North Pole, you have to be ready for the weather, and you gotta be ready to handle anything, regardless of the conditions. And that's something to consider too, that when you're out in the brush, there's no convenient time where you're hiding out, and you've gotta wait for a week. You just can't do that. When you've got to cross the distance and you've got to take the team there, you have to be prepared to go out and go do it. And this is one of the training mechanisms I use for that. 
hike up, hike down. I usually carry about a 15 kilo load up this hill and I can make it in about uh, 45 minutes. So it's something that's very important to me. I know I train hard. I know I mentally prepare myself. I push myself to the edge. You'll see that in some of the videos, samples that I have. Please visit here sometime. It's well worth the effort to come over here. The people are wonderful. The scenery is spectacular. The animals are completely accessible. And right at the base of town, you have Snow King, a mountain to hike up to take in the whole view. Thank you, and I look forward to seeing you in Africa. Come on, you can do it. This is how bad it is outside. Woohoo! It's been like that all day. Oh, can't even hardly stand up in it. Gotta say. Oh, close that thing up. It fills the tent with snow in seconds. And it covers me in snow. <laughs> this is freaking crazy. <laughs> yeah, let's just say. Not going well on the expedition plan. Hey, I care less junk. I don't know what to carry less. Uh, I don't know. Needless to say, not easy going. <laughs> oh, I'm hot.